All right, so what we are going to talk about <clears throat> today is we're going to talk about a bunch of the things that you need for the master's degree. And <clears throat> we're going to talk about all of that. And then I'm going to pause at 11 because that's so in about 33 minutes because that's when CICS Careers is going to come in and chat. And then we'll talk more about this. So there is a chance that maybe your stuff isn't going to get answered right away, but we'll get to it, I promise. So you're here, you're a master's student. What do you need to do to get your master's degree? Me, as your academic advisor, that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Number one, you need to take 30 credits. Every, just about every class is gonna be three credits. Some will be a little less. Linguistics classes sometimes are four, but usually they're three credits. You, so that's about 10 classes for your master's degree. Of those, you're gonna take four core classes or 12 credits. You have to take one theory core, one systems core, one AI core, and that fourth one can be from any of the other areas. So it can be an extra AI class. It can be an extra systems class. It could be an extra theory class. Almost every class is a core class. I'm not kidding. Seminar classes are not. Seminar classes are small classes that are based on like cutting edge research. They're usually 600 level classes. So they meet another requirement. Those aren't core classes, but almost everything else is. So sometimes students are like, oh, but should I take a non-core? What should I do? It's okay. A lot of times people end up taking six core classes. That's fine. That's wonderful because we don't have a thesis, because we don't have comprehensive exams in our master's degree, I want you to take the classes that you're excited about. You're putting your time and dollars and brain power into this. You need to do what you need to do and you need to take what you're pumped about. So that's part of the reason we do have so many core classes. In addition to those core classes, you have to take 12 credits, which is about four classes that are 600 level or higher. Here at UMass, master's level classes start at 500. So we will need you to take 12 credits of 600 level classes. Independent studies, including our very popular computer science, 696 data science, which is the data science industry mentorship class, doesn't count as a 600 level plus class because it's an independent study. Those are their own special separate sort of thing. But we do have a thing called a master's project, which is like an optional thesis. It's a lot. It's about two independent studies and then some. And that does count as a 600 level or higher class because you have two professors who work on it. We have midterm requirements, final requirements to make sure that that work really is up to the standards that we would like. What is also really great about these 600 level classes is you can double dip a core class and a 600 level class. For example, computer science 603 robotics, which is offered this semester, is both a 600 level class and an AI core class. So that one class checks two boxes of requirements, okay? So that the reason that we allow some that kind of double dipping with a core class and a 600 level class is because again, we want you to have all of these op Ooh, excuse me, all of these options so that your master's degree fits you. This is not like a one size fits all jumper situation, which like never works. This is a master's degree for Janie, for Aditya, for Steve, and for Parikh, we want all of you to have a degree that's going to fit you. Okay. And that's part of the reason we have all of this flexibility, including something like that fourth core class should be from somewhere that you are pumped about. So if you don't like AI, then don't take another one. Take a systems class if that's what you're excited about. Additionally, for your master's degree, you can take up to nine credits. That's three classes outside of computer science, which is pretty awesome. 
And there are 50 over 55 non computer science classes that are pre approved to count towards your master's degree. So these are classes that we have looked at and said, yes, these are great classes. They would really help you be a better computer scientist that you can take and they'll count towards your master's degree. Of those 55 classes, they come from all over UMass. They come from the Eisenberg School of Management. They come from the engineering school. They come from math and statistics. There is a whole list on our MS advising website of where all of these classes come from. And you can take three of them, which is pretty great. You can also take up to six credits, which is two classes of independent studies or SAT unset. Okay, an independent study, which we talked about a little bit before with Emma, is where you can work with professors or PhD students in labs, on code, on algorithms, on a paper, all of that stuff. And I do want to point out independent studies don't count as 600 level classes, which we said before. SAT unsat is the graduate student version of a pass fail class. Okay. So pass fail or sat unsat is where you earn credit for the class if you pass it or earn a satisfactory, but you don't get a letter grade so that it has no impact on your GPA. It doesn't raise it. It doesn't lower it. It's just you earned credit and that's it. You can still fail. That would be an unsat, which then counts as an F and you do not earn credit for the class. Each professor sets their own rules for sat unsat for satisfactory unsatisfactory here at UMass. What that means is say you are in 532 systems for data science. That professor can say a satisfactory in my course is a B or higher and you need to determine if you would like to take this class for a letter grade or for a satisfactory by the midterm. But you could be in another class where the professor says, in my class, a satisfactory is a C or higher, and you don't need to decide until the day before the final. That's okay. UMass empowers and gives the, each professor their own leeway and their own ability to set those rules. So if you're in a class and you're thinking, you know, I think I wanna take this satisfactory, ask, early because you could, you don't want to miss the deadline. You want to know exactly what it means and you want to have as much information as possible to shape your choice. And again, you get six credits of independent study and or pass fail. So if you've taken two credits, satisfactory, unsatisfactory, you don't have space for an independent study unless you take more than 30 credits. Also satisfactory classes are not gonna count as core classes because we need our core classes to count <clears throat> to be a B or higher, okay? Again, if you've got questions, put them in the chat, put them in the, excuse me, put them in the Q and A function. So that quick summary, you need 30 credits of coursework at UMass, they all have to be at the grad level. At UMass, anything above 500 is going to be a grad level class, four core classes, one systems, one AI, one theory, and then one from wherever you want. At least 12 non-independent study credits that are 600 level or higher, no more than nine credits outside of computer science. You need a C or better in all classes or a B or better in those core classes. And remember those SAT grades, that's not necessarily a B or higher. Therefore, SAT grades don't count as core classes. And since you need a C or better in everything, your GPA does have to be above a 3.0. What happens if you get a C minus in a class? It won't count towards your degree, but it's a class that you've taken. You've probably learned something from it. We can discuss, we can talk about what do we need to do in order to take classes that will count towards our degree. And that would be a great time to have a meeting with me and we can figure that out together. I do see a question in the chat that says, is it okay to enroll in more than one UWW course each semester? Some of you may have seen on Spire 
a a listing that says if the course is a university section or a UWW section. A lot of times a UWW section, which stands for University Without Walls section of a course, the University Without Walls section of the course will be um, online. It will be an online class. It is billed a little differently and that class can count towards your degree. The reason the class is listed differently is because University Without Walls is this really cool program here at UMass that allows people who are not in a degree program. So somebody who is working or who is interested in learning more, somebody who's not in a degree program to take a class. So for example, if there is a high school teacher of computer science who wants to take a securities course, but just one, they would take the UWW section of that class because they just want to learn that one thing. You can take as if you are an international student who is on a student visa. So if you're an international student physically here at UMass, physically on a student visa, you're only allowed to take one university without walls or UWW class each semester. If you are a domestic student, then you can take as many UWW classes as you want. If you are an international student who is all in our hybrid online MS, which is where you start your master's degree with four classes online, and then um, come to UMass, you can take as many UWW classes while you're online. If you're in our online only MS, almost all your classes are UWW. So it does depend. But if you are physically here at UMass, physically on a student visa, one UWW class a semester. During the winter and the spring, every class is a UWW class. So during the winter and the spring, you can take as many as you want. Because the winter and the spring, when it comes to student visa stuff, are seen as like extra overachiever, super excited student classes. So you can take as many UWW classes as you want, because many colleges don't offer grad classes in the winter or in the summer. Okay. So we also have these things called concentrations here in our master's program. We have three concentrations. Here are the first two. You can only have one concentration. Only one of them will show up on your transcript. You can only enroll in one concentration. Our first concentration is the security concentration. You must take Computer Science 660 Advanced Information Assurance as well as secure, um, <clears throat> two security systems electives from a list of five, plus that other stuff that we talked about for your master's. The concentrations basically take your master's from this big, from all the stuff you want, and they kind of narrow it down into either the systems area, the data science area, or the other thing that we'll talk about in a second. So it really just kind of molds your master's degree into something a little narrower. So you still have to take the AI class, you still have to take the theory class, but you'll have a security concentration. For the data science concentration, there are specific options for you to pick from, from every core area. So you have two options for your theory core, I think two options for your systems core and maybe five options for your AI core, you pick one of each. You do have to do that fourth core area again from that list. And then you have data science electives that you have to take as well. So you would pick two data science elective courses from a list of over 12. The one thing that people forget about with the data science concentration sometimes is there's also a statistics requirement. You do have to take one statistics course you have over 10 courses to pick from, but only one of those courses is a computer science course. The others are all statistics courses. So just keep that in mind when you're planning stuff, make sure that you've left space for that course to potentially be outside of computer science. We also have a field experience concentration. Our field experience concentration is uh, about a year old. It's very exciting. 
our field experience concentration is really designed for our international students, our international students who are physically in the US for this first semester and who are interested in carrying out an internship or using CPT after one semester. So if you are an international student right now, if you would like to work for summer 2022, this is how we do that. Again, you only get one concentration. So if you're an international student who wants to work in summer 2022, you would pick the field experience concentration. If you're interested in data science, you can take all those data science classes. And then on your resume list, focus in data science. So in this field experience concentration, it's a little confusing. Take a breath, get ready to listen. Again, this, this session's recorded, so we'll have it available later. Take some notes, ask some questions. This field experience concentration allows international students to carry out internships and use CPT earlier than what was required to be two semesters back to back physically in the US. To be in the field experience concentration, you'll fill out a pre application listed on our website, but you have to pick one of seven systems classes and one of six AI classes before your internship or CPT experience. And you've got to be here in the US on your student visa. So if you're like, yeah, I'm here, I'm at UMass, I'm down the street at Puffton Village, I'm physically here, I'm in that systems, I'm in that AI class, great. Fill out the pre application and make sure that you pass those classes, which I'm sure you will. And you can start applying for internships. Once your internship is over, you can, you have to take one course that has a major project component on the field experience concentration website is a whole list of those classes. This is just a sampling. All of our independent studies have a major project component. So an independent study counts, including the very popular 696 DS data science concentration. Um, our brand new independent study 696 E, which is, I always get the name wrong, security systems for child rescue, I think. Um, our master's project, computer science 682 neural networks, all of these and quite a few more have major project components that have to be done after your internship. So if you're in 682 right now, that's not after your internship. That's before. So it cannot count as your project component. So for spring 2022, if you want to work in summer 2022, you must be in the US if you want to use the concentration and you have to be in on your student visa. Okay. And again, you only get one concentration that will appear on your transcript. I have a question in the chat that is not related to the field experience concentration. It says, Am I allowed to tend to attend a course on campus if I am enrolled in it for UWW? Um, if the UWW section of the class is an online meeting time, yes, you would go to the, you can go to the online meeting time. This sounds like a very specific course in particular, so I'm going to ask that you send me an email and we'll double check it together and we'll make sure. Um, but thank you for your question. So this is the field experience concentration. Do we have any questions about our concentrations? They're totally optional. That's why it says optional. You don't have to pick a concentration. They are, again, they take your master's degree from this and they narrow it down a little bit. It shows up on your transcript, not on your diploma. When you apply for jobs, they usually want your transcript. They do not want your diploma. It is a big, pretty piece of paper. Ain't nobody want that. They want the transcript that lists all the courses you were in. But again, these are totally optional. One of the questions is, where can I find details about the courses that have major project components? Great question. That has to do with our field experience concentration. If you go to the MS Advising homepage, click on the field experience concentration link, it will show you exactly the list of all of the classes that have project components. We are constantly adding and updating that list. So if you say, hey, this class has a project component, it's not on here. We'll take it to the faculty, we'll review it, and we can add it to that list if it does meet those um, qualifications. Um, so you would need to make sure that it happens after, that it's got a project component. There's a list of all of them, but you may be in a class and look at the syllabus and go, uh, there's a project on here. Can we count it? 
and we'll review it and let you know. I have another question. Can we change a concentration from a field experience concentration to something else if I don't get a job in summer 2022? Absolutely, because you have to have an internship to have this concentration. So if you don't have an internship, you don't have the concentration, that's fine. That's a-okay. Nobody knows that you were in this because the concentration doesn't show up until you graduate and it's on your transcript. So if you're like, I think I wanna do field experience, and then you end up not interning, that is a-okay. That's fine, we've tried, it's gone, do not worry about it, absolutely. That also means that you could start out in data science, in the data science concentration, you take your two, two core classes and go, data science is not what I thought it was. I actually really like security. Then we can switch from data science to security too. There's a lot of flexibility. We want, again, the whole point of our masters is we want it to fit you and what you wanna do. So that's, we're very flexible in that, okay? That was a great question, thank you. If we first enroll for the field experience concentration and fail to get an internship, can we change our concentration? Yes, totally, yes. If you think you're gonna, you wanna do field experience, you end up not doing an internship, Instead, you do research in summer 2022 or something else. Yes, you can totally change concentrations. Again, we want your degree to work for you and fit for you. So if that means moving and shaking and moving things around, we're going to do that. That is what we will do. We want everything to work for you the best that it can. Okay. The other thing that we are going to 